Well, hi there. Do you see that sea turtle? Obviously, I'm in a great place, but I am here today to talk to you about octopus because octopus might be the coolest creatures on this planet. They're certainly some of the most unusual. I, I would accept an argument that they're not even from this planet. Intelligent creatures tend to be long-lived social endothermic vertebrates. Octopus are short-lived ectothermic invertebrates. And when they run into another octopus, they usually try to eat said octopus. That seems like some mildly antisocial behavior, but I hate to sound judgmental. Somehow, despite being none of the things that intelligent animals generally are, they are themselves highly intelligent. They are incredible at solving complex puzzles and learning how to do so by observing other octopus, even though they would eat one another if given the chance. Since I can't eat you, I guess I'll just watch you open that jar, climb inside, meet that shrimp in case it ever comes up for me. And it isn't because they have a big brain. We usually call invertebrate brains cerebral ganglia because we don't even want to give them credit for having a brain. Well, call it what you will, octopus have a primary ganglion, but then additional ganglia controlling each arm and each sucker. They sort of have little brains all over the place. And individual octopus have very distinct personalities one from the other, and they have incredible abilities, especially in the realm of camouflage. This is the only cephalopod without any trace of a shell. They also don't possess great speed, so what is their secret? That they keep themselves a secret. They employ a wide range of camouflage abilities, like their close cousins, the cuttlefish, that we talked about before. They match not only their texture, but also their color to their surroundings. It might be worth mentioning that they don't see in color. So how do they do this? We don't really know. They're an enigma wrapped in tentacles that each have their own brains. They are amazing and totally bizarre. But do octopus make good pets? And is this antisocial, intelligent alien master of disguise the best pet cephalopod for you? In order to help you figure this out, we are going to score the octopus based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the octopus a score of two out of five. This again is a creature that handles you more than you handle it. And that makes sense, since it has a lot more arms than you do. Eight, hence the name, each one controlled by not only the primary ganglion, but its own private ganglion. And then each arm has loads of little suckers, and each of those have their own ganglia as well. No big deal. And those arms can not only feel your texture and temperature, but they can taste you as well. Sorry if that makes you uncomfortable. Needless to say, whenever your octopus comes into contact with you, a circus of information is being gathered by the octopus about the funny monkey that just reached into its tide pool. Octopus do have a beak, and, and it's made out of chitin, so it's essentially like a modified beetle that they bite with, and it can inject generally some mild venom. I say generally because if you get a blue-ringed octopus, Mm, I would not call it mild. In fact, just know what kind of octopus you have and how medically significant the venom. That said, generally it isn't too dangerous. Personally, I would love to have the experience of keeping an octopus someday, but I'm not sure I would need to let it taste me. If you do though, you can be assured that it will know if you're food or not long before you get to the beak. And given how visual and intelligent this creature is, I'm sure it will know who you were long before you ever reached in there. And even so, once it grabs you, you can try to avoid the old beak if you like to. Additionally, they can ink if they're frightened. So, like, never try to put them in that situation. Be sure interaction is done on their terms, not your terms. Quick color changes to black or white can indicate that your octopus is concerned about your presence. If you opt not to touch your octopus, believe me, there are countless ways to interact with it. It is sort of like having an alien monkey in a box. And while we're on the subject of handling, I've never personally handled an octopus. And so I'd like to turn over time to Brent, who works here at the wonderful Loveland Living Planet Aquarium, to talk to us about what it is like interacting with these incredible, incredible animals. 
All right, well, thank you very much for that introduction, Clint. Here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium, we have had a long time tradition of having giant Pacific octopus. They are extremely fascinating animals. You need to have something for it to do. Here we provide our octopus with stimulation in the form of enrichment. Enrichment can be as simple as, we're giving you a different type of food or something new. But it can also be as complex as, I am giving you a ball that has your food in it today and you have to figure out how to open it. Or maybe it's a jar that you have to unscrew or some other kind of puzzle or toy. Sometimes our keepers will have the chance to feed the octopus by hand and interact with them by touch. And when you do, it is a odd and alien sensation. The arm and body of an octopus are very slimy and slick. It's almost like holding a wet mushroom, that kind of wet, soft texture. But it also is extremely muscular and strong. So you have this odd contrast of muscle with wet, smooth, slick, slimy skin. The suckers of the octopus are fascinating as well. The suckers are their main way of engaging with things. I like to think of them almost like fingers. If you give a small child a toy or something, one of the first things they do is they feel it. Or with really young kids, they shove it in their mouth because they can taste it and feel it. Just think of an octopus's suckers as the mouth of a really small kid. They're going to be tasting and feeling whatever's there. And each of those suckers can grab and hold at different intensities. So they'll pull and it, it almost feels kind of like a little bit of a massage, just kind of pulling and moving on your arm. But if they find something that's really fascinating or they decide they don't want to let go, they can move their suction from being just a very gentle little grabbing and holding to really gripping and holding on. Uh, an octopus, like a giant Pacific octopus, can hold at about 7 to 14 pounds per square inch of force, which is when you start to get into the breaking point of water and vacuum and whole other discussion. But that's enough when you have a lot of suckers to get some real power. In the wild, they're going to be finding and eating crabs, clams, and things like that. And if you've ever pulled open and shucked a clam before, it takes some serious work to do that, and that's with a tool. The octopus, all with their arms and suckers. So those are some of the things that we have to do here at the aquarium to keep our octopus happy and occupied. You'll see them sleeping and resting a lot like many predators do, but when they are active and going around, they're actively exploring and it is an incredible sight to behold. And we hope to see you checking it out here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium. Thank you so much, Brent, and thank you to the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium for having us here to make these amazing videos that we've been able to make. It's been such a treat. We've had such an unforgettable time. And, and the thing is, we haven't even seen very many things that you can't see when you come here as a guest. So just come here. you got to see it. When it comes to care, we give the octopus a score of 2 out of 5. Octopus are not easy pets by any stretch of the imagination. I would only recommend them if you are a highly experienced saltwater aquarist. We lay out the importance of cycling a tank and water changes in our video on freshwater stingrays. So for more information on that, please check out this video. We also cover the intricacies of using salt water and when to add salt to your water in our video on cuttlefish. So if you're serious about getting an octopus, you're definitely going to want to watch that video as well. I highly recommend that you check out both of those videos if you're really serious about keeping an octopus or if you just want to know about some other rad organisms. Your tank will need excellent filtration and proper temperatures that will depend on the exact species that you keep. You could potentially need to either heat or chill the water depending on the exact species, so definitely know which octopus you're getting before you get it. In addition to water changes to remove nitrate, you may need to perform an emergency water change if your octopus ever releases its ink into the water. And copper. This is an important cephalopod specific issue. Cephalopods are very sensitive to copper. Test your water, you know, especially if you've got copper pipes in your home. Goldfish are frequently treated with copper, so don't use them as feeders. And this gets us to feeding. We're here today at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium in Draper, Utah. And they have been kind enough to not only let us film their amazing Pacific giant octopus, as well as the sharks behind us. In fact, if you haven't seen our video on black tip reef sharks, I have a suggestion for what you should do as soon as this video is over. There'll be a link down in the description. 
We'll throw one up here too, just in case. In case you're like, ah, octopus are boring. I want to see some sharks or some rat sharks. We should stay for the rest of the octopus. If you've seen that video, you know that we got to feed their sharks. Well, we got to feed their octopus as well. This is one of many things that I love about this aquarium. There are lots of animal feedings that go on every day. My family frequently gets a season pass here, which is totally the way to go because I basically want to live here and we see something new and amazing each time we come. Obviously, I love the cuttlefish, sharks, and octopus, but that is just the beginning. My favorite part of the whole thing is their South America exhibit. South America is often overlooked by zoos, and this is a shame because it has some of the most spectacular wildlife on the entire planet. When they opened up that exhibit, this place went from being a typical state-of-the-art aquarium to being one of my favorite places that I have ever visited. And they went on to open up their Asia exhibit just to put a little gravy on top. I can honestly tell you that this place is worth taking a trip to Utah to visit. And you can bop down to Clint's Reptile Room while you're here. Octopus, though, are carnivores, and they eat a lot for their size. Crustaceans and fish will form the majority of their diet. You can use frozen, thawed marine invertebrates and fish, which is convenient because they're available at the grocery store. Use lots of diversity of feeders. Realize that any animal placed in the tank with your octopus, including other octopus, are likely to become one with your octopus. So make sure that's what you want before you put anything else in there. Because they can be such voracious and messy feeders, be sure to use a very good filter and a protein skimmer. And this is where it gets tricky. You need filtration to enter your enclosure. You need to be able to get into your enclosure. But octopus can fit through any space larger than their beak. And this is the beak of the largest octopus on the planet. In general, plan on the beak being probably smaller potentially than the eye of your octopus. And that is what makes them so excellent at getting out of tanks. I've actually heard really interesting stories uh, from people that had labs where they kept octopus, where they had organisms from other enclosures in their lab that were disappearing and they couldn't figure out what was going on. And so they set up a motion detecting camera in their lab and noticed that at night their octopus would squeeze out of its enclosure from a very small hole. They would climb down the side, across the floor, and up into other aquaria, eat things out of the other aquaria like some sort of a buffet and then crawl back into their enclosure so the next morning they could be in there like I don't know what happened either it's just darn just like people are eating people I don't know basically it's like trying to contain super intelligent muscular silly putty with a marble inside keeping an octopus especially a small octopus contained is a heck of a trick so you will need the best lid ever. It probably better lock and then silicone everything. Thank you to our patrons at Patreon that made this possible. We couldn't have done it without you. And, and we are so grateful for all that you do. You, you constantly are giving us new abilities so we can show you new things like this. This is all because of you. And, and as you guys know that are already patrons, we provide a lot of features to try to pay you back. If you're not currently a supporter at Patreon, please go check it out. It does so much for our channel and it's also a lot of fun. When it comes to hardiness, we give the octopus a score of two out of five. Under the best of circumstances, your octopus will live at most a few years. Smaller species may only live a few months. Plus, saltwater tanks are complex. Stay on top of water quality, especially ammonia and copper. Watch out for infections and don't let it escape. When it comes to availability, we give the octopus a score of 3 out of 5. Online will be your best source, but you can find octopus at expos, and I've even seen them at pet stores that sell marine fish. So they're out there. It's plenty easy to get an octopus, just difficult to have somewhere appropriate to contain one once you have it. And that gets us to upfront costs. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the octopus a score of 3 out of 5. Of course, that will depend to a great degree on the exact species that you get, but generally people keep these smaller species. Compared to the tank, even something crazy like a blue ring octopus is pretty affordable. Generally speaking, you'll be able to get an appropriate aquarium from your local saltwater aquarium supplier. My guess is that you'll have to do a lot of fabrication work to make it escape proof though. 
You'll also need some substrate, filters, protein skimmer, maybe a heater, some live rock, salt, water conditioner, water quality testing equipment, and then some frozen seafood gumbo to feed your octopus. Overall, we give the octopus a score of 3.4 out of 5. If what you want is a surprisingly intelligent, short-lived escape artist with a scary bite that it is unlikely to use if it knows you well, then what you want is a rat. Should we make a video about rats, by the way? We've never done that. But if what you want is basically an antisocial alien sea rat, then the octopus is it. Just make sure that you're ready because this is not an easy pet at all. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. <laughs> oh, that was a black dip down low. <laughs> it would have been perfect. Hello? Did you get a Hello? call on your cell phone? <laughs> it's a wrong number. I don't know who they were trying to call, but it was not a less. That seems like we should have eight categories. Suction cup ability, color and texture change ability, bow skills. When it comes to handle ability, we give the octopus a score of two out of five. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I do things just to upset Jason. Can we stop and stop? Shark, watch a shark now. <laughs>